Welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't stop when the video ends. Today we're at home, we're working on Jeremy's Yukon, and we're going to show you how to get a panel ready for primer using some basic hand tools. Don't overthink it, it's just paint. Well, thank you for joining me once again on this build. We can see the first step when doing any project is to take as much off as you can. So we've already removed the lower trim here in this area, the belt molding as well as the uh, mirror. Now the handles on this vehicle are extremely tough to remove. And since we're working on this vehicle over the course of many, many weeks and months, like you guys at home, we're keeping them in till the very, very end. Now let's identify what we have going on here. If you pan in this area, we can see that the paint is starting to really you know uh, detach from the base the clear, clear coat is all pitted it's cratered up so a lot of you guys are wondering how do i get a panel like this ready for primer what are the steps how come i can't just sand it down and put some paint over it well that's what we're going to show you right now we're going to start with all of this paint here that is starting to uh yeah deteriorate pretty bad now, a lot of you guys always ask, Brian, how do I attack a project? And I always tell you one panel at a time. Do not overwhelm yourself. If you overwhelm yourself, it's really going to show in the end. Well, how do you tell if a car has been repainted? When you go down the road, you see a really splotchy bodywork and wrinkled up paint. Well, it starts right here in the very first step. The preparation is key to any paint job. So if you come in here, we can see that this paint right here is bad, right? This paint right here is good. If that is good, that's as good as it's gonna get, right? But up here, we need to smooth this out, and we're not using any fancy DA, we're just using a simple Dura block, all right? And this is sticky paper, and this is P180 grit. Now, I like this grit because it's kind of in between a really aggressive and a fine grit, and it's gonna be enough to smooth it out. So all we're gonna do, basically, is smooth it out, and we're gonna go across the whole entire panel until we see it feathered out. After we do that, this is what it should look like. You can see how it's feathered down. Now, every paint job tells a story. We can see the rings here, and this has been repainted at least, I would say, one, two, three times, okay? And well, that's okay. As long as it was prepared properly each time, we won't have any issues. Now, we did go around the whole entire car and give it paintless dent removal, and we took out any of those dings along the way, although there are still a few here and there, we're gonna go ahead and attack one panel at a time. That way we don't get overwhelmed. Now, earlier in the series, we worked a little bit on this fender. We stripped it down, we noticed some Bondo, and we did put some Bondo back onto this fender to kind of line it up just a little bit. And we're gonna be doing a little bit of Bondo filler work here. There was a little bit of a ripple, so we'll be using some of our glazing putty and applying it in both of these panels and sanding them down and then we'll sand them down together and hopefully we'll have a nice seamless um, gap right here, which is what we have. We have a little bit of something going on here. So a little bit of the wire wheel and some sanding will help out in that area. Basically what we're gonna be learning from this video is what grits to use, how to use them and how to work ourselves into our primer. Now we are using a glazing putty and Eastwood makes this one. And it's very, very easy to apply and sand. Think of this as icing on the cake. It's very, very thin. A body filler will be a lot thicker. And well, that is for a little bit more major dents. This is already smoothed out pretty much. We have one coat already here. And we're looking just to kind of fill in a little bit of the crevices and smooth it out a little bit on this older truck. Now we're gonna go ahead and mix it up. And one of my viewers did say that it's good to put tape on here because you shouldn't be using cardboard when mixing up your body filler because it is a porous, uh, material and it can get into the actual cardboard and create uh, what we call pinholes. So we just want to mix up a little bit. So, you know, it's not make or break, but if you are concerned, put a little bit of tape down first and this will create a nice kind of a wax barrier, kind of like when you're cooking uh, with using a cooking sheet, something similar just like that. And what we're going to be doing is just using a little bit. We don't need a whole lot. I would put about maybe that much here. Okay. And then with our filler, okay, you can take it and knead it up a little bit. And then 
what we're gonna do, it's a very hot day today. I'm not gonna use a whole lot, but we need to use enough so it hardens. So I'm just gonna go just like that. That's enough. And then we're gonna go ahead and we'll mix her up. All right, and to do this, we'll just knead it. We'll overlap it. We're not gonna stir it. As you've seen on my other videos, we wanna overlap it until we have one uniform color. That uniform color will be a light blue. It's kind of what we're seeing here. We don't want any streaks. See those streaks right in here? That's not good. So keep on, you know, smoothing it out. If you see something that's stuck in there, like a little piece of hardened Bondo, maybe from before, if you're using an old spreader, make sure you get that out because that will cause like a line in your filler. All right. Does the sun lessen your time to work with it? Yes. So let's get moving. All right. So we had a little bit of a low spot here, but this is basically going to be our last coat um, before we go ahead and prime it down. It doesn't need a whole lot. And most of this, most of the time when you're doing filler work, most of it will come off. So don't be concerned if you're putting it on kind of ugly and it doesn't look too good. Most of this is going to come right off. All right. We'll leave her right there. So our Bondo is dried for about a good 10 minutes and we're going to be using an 80 grit. In our 80 grit, we're gonna use the same block. When we're using a small area or working a small area, you wanna use the block that fits the area. So all I'm gonna do here is, you see like the little ridges here? I'm just gonna knock them down. The obviously excess stuff. The, the excess, yeah, where you can't, you're never gonna be able to lay it perfect, okay? All we're looking to do is kinda help out the filler for our next grit and just kinda smooth it out. And you can sand them together. You can sand at it one way and then the X way the other way. Okay. I'm gonna make sure you get that. As Jeremy just pointed out, there's a little ridge right there. We can go in between. We can take our sandpaper off here. We don't wanna go too crazy because this is 80, but we wanna clean up that edge a little bit. You can even use a paint stick to get through here. Okay. The only thing with the sticky paper is it, it kinda doesn't always stick. The Velcro is a little bit better. Another issue I had when I was sanding is it touched dirt and I ended up with little pebbles and stuff like that. That's and another... as soon as you go sand, you can see that you have something. Right, on. right. It makes it on an even surface. Right. Yeah. I have never really used sticky too much, to be honest, but um, I, it's a little bit more cost effective for the guys at home. So that's what we're doing here. So it's going to be the same thing. We're just going to go one way diagonal and then the other way diagonal and we'll keep on doing this until it's completely feathered out we got about half of the sanding done you can see this is feathered into the original body filler we had done on the fender and over here we still have a little bit of an edge so we want to continue to feather this but we need a little bit of a guide and the best guide that we can use is this guide coat right here um, any guide coat out of an aerosol is good. So come here and what this is going to do is this is going to sink into the lowest spots of the actual um, filler itself. And then we'll use our 180 still and we'll be able to tell, hey, what areas do we need to stand? So when Jeremy goes over here on this side, um, we'll, we'll take a closer look here. You can see the, the black still staying, right? So it's indicating to him that he needs to sand even more on this edge. We don't want to keep on adding filler, but if we need to, we can. But he'll work that edge a little bit. So Jeremy, what you can do since since these two are not the same, like 100% level, you can you can take it like this and kind of just smooth that out a little bit, and that's going to help kind of with that edge. And if we, but that also shows you where you would build up. A little you bit might, more. yeah. We, but what 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 it could be too is this could be too high. Okay. And if this is too high, it's gonna show that that's low when really that could be the right surface level, right. if that if that makes sense. So you kinda, you know, the guide code is great. It really helps, but you really just need to use your common sense, feel it, see how it looks. If it needs a little bit of more uh, filler just to even it out, then we'll do, we'll do just that. And we did a little bit of sanding here, and yeah, the, it, it's just a little low in that area. So we're gonna put a little, a little bit on right here, just to kind of smooth that out. And without the guide coat, you, you might not be able to tell, but as soon as you got paint on it, 
or maybe even primer. Basically, once it was too late, then you'd be able to tell. And if you put a little bit more on, it's not going to be a problem. It's all going to come off where it needs to. It all comes off where it needs to. Okay. Starting to kick already. I'll leave it right there. Let it dry up. And it's looking like that little swipe of filler is all we need it. Now, if you look across the door, our next step is we're going to want to block this out. And now, this whole entire car, eventually, we're all going to block it straight. But we're showing you how we're doing it here on this one panel. Now, since we're going to be going a much bigger distance, we need to choose the appropriate block. Now, these would be the appropriate size blocks. You can see this is the longest blocks that came in the kit. Now, they actually do make even longer than this. So you can see the difference here. That's something for much smaller, what we've been using. And what we're gonna wanna do is block this out. And the reason why is, well, there's a lot of paint on here. And sometimes when you put a lot of paint on there, you can experience something called urethane wave, which is just a little bit of waviness in the actual panel. And you'll see it on big, big, large panels just like this. So what we'll be doing is we're going to kind of try to get the panel as flat as possible by doing a pre-blocking prior to any primer work. Now, once the primer is on there, we'll have even more blocking. This type of work is not easy, but in the beginning of the video, well, we said prep is everything. So we're looking at our panel right here. We can see that we feathered out first initially our dead paint, and then we did a little bit of filler work. And well, there are a couple of panels that are adjacent to the original panel, the fender, and now the rear door that had a couple small dents that we couldn't get with PDR. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be blocking down this whole entire car. And remember, we're doing this in little increments. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna block down that door, and we're gonna block down this door and this fender since we have a little bit of extra help. Now, what grit do we use? So there's two ways to do this. We can do it with 320 or we can do it with 180 or we can do it with 180 and then 320. Here's the difference. If you do it with 320, it's not gonna cut it laser straight. That's what we really want. We have a lot of layers on there. So we're gonna be using 180. 180 will cut through the paint and make it straight. So by doing it with 180 and 320, you're doing yourself a big favor and helping yourself out in the end. You're gonna have a much nicer finish. Let's go ahead and show you how to do it. Now, when doing blocking, it's best to keep that block as straight as possible. Now, we're not doing any body filler or anything like that. So if we stray away from the cross hatch pattern, that is okay. Some of us, sometimes we just like to go the distance of the panel itself. So what does blocking do? Well, it really identifies low spots, right? So as we block, the block is only gonna hit the high spots and anywhere where we see shiny, that's somewhere where we still wanna continue to block. And once we see that it's all one uniform, um, I would say, dullness, that would indicate that we are good to go. So Jeremy and I are going to tag team on this one. We're going to hit the beats up a little bit and let's get rolling. I got my little dents all filled up. Jeremy's got 320 grit. He already took the fender down with 320. We'll go ahead and start blocking out the rest of it and smoothing out these two doors and that fender. Got it all blocked out and we blew it off. And now we're gonna be using a pre-painting uh, prep this is gonna help remove any more of the dust in the sand scratches and get it ready for our primer. Go ahead, you can do it on the uh, paper towel or if you wanna do it right on the surface, you can see that there's still some dust in there. So we'll do this a couple times, probably Jeremy, just to get all of the uh, dust out of the sand scratches. What can happen if you leave some dust in the sand scratches is, uh, you know, the primer is not gonna have a chance to go as deep as it could and you could get some adhesion issues just figure if you're putting primer over dust, you know, that could cause an issue. So we'll continue to clean it off. We'll get it one step ready to getting our primer on. Once it's all wiped down, we're ready to get it all masked up. Now we're just gonna mask up these two doors and this fender. When we originally started off, we were going to just do this door. But since we only had a little bit of work, since we got paintless dent removal done on the rear door, and the fender was previously done, 
from another episode, we're gonna put our 2K urethane on all three panels. Let's get her masked up. All right, and once it's all masked up, we're gonna take our metal areas and we use a little bit of etching primer first. We don't need to get it onto our body filler, just the metal. And this is gonna help, you know, protect it against any rust or anything like that. It's just a good measure to do beforehand. So any of those spots that you see, go ahead and give them a little bit of a spray. See into here, we have a little exposed metal. You don't need to completely put like two or three coats on it. One initial coat, it's gonna be fine, all right? We'll let that tack off for about a good 10 minutes and we're ready for our primer. Let's go take a look at our primer right now. This is the real deal primer now. This is a real automotive primer, nothing out of a can. Now we've been working on the vehicle for a good couple months, doing a little bit of rattle can here and there just to get us by. But now these three panels are gonna be considered ready for paint once they're sanded and we'll perform the same action along the whole, entire, the whole entire car. But this is the stuff you need to put on your vehicle if you're serious about having it come out good. It's got the, it's got the activator in here and that's what it's gonna lock down the actual primer. This is a thick, thick primer. You're gonna be able to block it out, sand it. It's a primer surfacer, okay? So it's gonna be able to go ahead and get into all those 320 grit scratches and we'll be able to smooth them out. Guys, this is not gonna fix bad body work. All right, so keep that in mind. It mix, mixes four to one, and we're gonna spray with the turbine. Let's get started. This is our mixing cup. We've located four to one, four parts primer, one part activator. And we're gonna use the max amount of primer right there. We'll stop at seven. And we're gonna use our activator now. We'll go up to our next seven. Now we might have mixed up a little too much, but I don't want to have to go and mix up more. We'll go ahead and put this in our turbine cup after we stir it up. All right, we got everything mixed up. Sometimes it's just hard to get a wood stick, the price of wood nowadays. All right, fill it up almost all the way. There we go. I'm um, gonna run, I think around 5.5. Takes a second to to buffer up. You can play with it a little bit. Let's go to the car and see. Much smoother. I'll get it. No overstay. All right, and this is after two coats of primer. You can see the turbine did a phenomenal job and how important that 180 and 320 grit 
is to getting it all completely leveled out. From here, these panels are ready to go. And like a lot of you at home, this is a good starting point to get a few panels ready for paint at a time and then continue to the rest on the vehicle. And we were able to pull off the masking just a few minutes later. It really dries quick when it's outside. Now this type of primer work you can do outside. If you're coming to paint, you wanna do something like that inside. Well, where we'll go from here, something like this, once the whole vehicle is ready, can be sanded down with 400 grit, 600 grit, and then ready for paint. Hope you guys enjoyed something on this project. Hope you learned something on this project. And guys, this is Brian from Paint Side reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. We'll see you guys in the next one.